Hello and welcome back to Ordinary Differential Equations, the video series where we solve such equations and talk about the theory behind it. And indeed, in today's part 8, we start discussing the existence and the uniqueness of solutions. However, before we formulate these questions, first let me thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, on Patreon, here on YouTube or by other means. In fact, I can tell you, the existence of these supporters implies the existence of this video course here. And therefore, as a thank you, all supporters find additional material on my webpage given by the link in the description. Ok, with that out of the way, we can start with the topic of today by formulating important questions about ordinary differential equations. More precisely, we will ask these questions for so-called initial value problems. And there please recall, these are given by an ordinary differential equation and an initial value which is usually fixed at the time zero. And here please note, this is the general case of an autonomous system, so V goes from Rn into Rn. Moreover, you also already know, sometimes the domain of V could be smaller, so just a subset of Rn. Ok, now you might remember that in the last videos we have already solved some initial value problems for the one dimensional case. Therefore, for this general case, some questions immediately arise. For example, a natural question would be, do we always find a solution for such an initial value problem? And now if we find a solution, we immediately get more questions about that. Indeed, one thing could be about the domain of definition for which time intervals is the solution well defined. The best case scenario would be it's defined on the whole real number line. Ok, and now you might already guess, if we ask about the existence of solutions, we should also ask about the uniqueness of solutions. In other words, can we find more than one solution for a given initial value problem? Ok, now in this video here, we can answer the last two questions here with some well chosen examples. In other words, we will show that the domain of definition is not always R and that the uniqueness of solutions is also not always given. So you could say we have some nice counter examples to answer these questions. So let's start with an initial value problem we have already solved in former videos. Namely, x dot is equal to x squared. And as the initial value, let's choose x0 is equal to 1. Ok, and now you should know how to solve this initial value problem, otherwise you should watch part 5 again. So we conclude that the solution exists and we call it alpha again. More precisely, alpha of t is given as 1 divided by 1 minus t. So if you don't believe it, you can just calculate the derivative and check that the equation is fulfilled and also the initial value is correct. However, what I want to point out here is that this solution is not defined on the whole real number line. Indeed, with our initial value t is equal to 0 in mind, we can conclude that this solution is only defined for t less than 1. Therefore, the maximal domain of definition we can choose for this solution here is not the whole real number line. So this is definitely something that can happen and something we have to keep in mind. However, please don't forget, this is only something that happens in the time variable, because if you look at the directional field, everything looks normal. So here please recall, this is given by the x variable, so this is the vector field given by our function v of x. In other words, here at 1 we have a vector that points to the right, and maybe we ignore the values at the negative axis. Moreover, if we go further away from the origin, the vectors get longer and longer. And here please don't forget, our initial value problem starts at here, at x is equal to 1. Therefore, we immediately see, the solution has to start here and increase and run to infinity. And now the thing we get out with the formula for the solution here, is that it runs to infinity in finite time. So you could say, we have a very fast movement to infinity. But of course, you see, for the existence and the uniqueness of the solution, this behavior is not a problem at all. 
Therefore, now I want to show you a second initial value problem where the uniqueness is not given. So we will define a function v again and then we start in the origin with the x variable. So you might already guess that the function v will have a very special behavior at zero. Namely, we will define it differently depending if we are positive or negative. Now, the positive part is very simple. We just use the square root of x. And in fact, we can also include zero in this definition. And now for the negative part, I want to use minus the square root. However, inside the square root, we cannot have a negative number, so I use the absolute value around x. Therefore, if you want that for symmetry, you can also include it here in the positive part as well. So you see, what we do here is that we put the sign of the variable x in front of the square root. And in fact, this gives a very nice function that is well-defined and also continuous. Hence, in the graph, we just have the square root function on both sides. However, of course, it's mirrored on the negative domain. But even more importantly, we see that the differentiability is given everywhere except at zero where it collapses because we would have an infinite slope. But still, it's a continuous function, so the whole ODE here makes sense. So the existence of solutions is indeed not a problem, but we find at least two different solutions for this initial value problem. One you might immediately see because we can stay at zero as long as we want. In fact, the vector field at zero is equal to zero, so we don't have any movement there. But now the thing is that we could also change this solution by start moving after some time. Therefore, let's call this solution alpha tilde. And as I already said, there we have two conditions where one is just zero again. And let's say this we have for t less or equal than zero. And then we see for t greater than zero, we can just choose one quarter t squared. So without problems, we immediately see this is a continuously differentiable function. And moreover, the derivative here is exactly what we want to fulfill the ODE. So this is not hard to check. You can just calculate the derivative and put it in. And in addition, you should also see the initial value is also satisfied. So in summary, we can say we have two solutions that fulfill the initial value problem and they are obviously not the same. And in fact, for our theory, it would be nice if we could exclude such strange behaviors. So in general, we want to have the existence and the uniqueness of a solution of a given initial value problem. This means the vector fields v have to be nice enough such that we have that. In other words, our directional field should get us these informations. So this means we visualize the function v as a vector field in the domain given by the variable x. And now the existence of solutions means that for a given point, we can follow the arrows to get an orbit. Indeed, such an orbit is just the image of the solution. Hence, if we want to have existence of solutions, we want that each point lies on an orbit. Or to say it differently, we could formulate the question as, does each point have an orbit? Of course, this is what we want, because then each initial value problem with the given vector field is solvable. At least in theory, then we know that the solution exists. However, now we know that uniqueness also would be a very nice property which means for each point, there should be only one orbit. Or in other words, if we want to have uniqueness, orbits should not cross. Simply because at the crossing point, the initial value problem with this initial value would have two different paths to go. This is something that can happen, and we have seen that with the example above. However, it's important to know that we can avoid that by putting an additional condition to the vector field V. This will be a so-called Lipschitz condition that will guarantee both things here. So you see, this is a very nice result and actually what we want for the theory. Therefore, in the next video, we will discuss this so-called Lipschitz condition. So I really hope that I see you there and have a nice day. Bye bye.